Salicylic acid is the beta hydroxy acid that exfoliates and it's been ultra popular for a very long time. But more recently, it's been bumped from the spotlight by trendier acids. However, thanks to TikTok fame, it is now back on people's radar. So the question is, is it worth the hype? Hi, I'm Dr. Sam, helping you get closer to great skin days, just like I've done for thousands of patients in my Harley Street clinic. So salicylic acid, we're going to be breaking it down today. So make sure to stay to the end to get that ultimate question. Is it worth the hype answered? So I realize it's been literally forever since I did any content around salicylic acid on YouTube. And that is a bit of an omission. Now, salicylic acid is a really interesting molecule. It's a beta hydroxy acid, and it's related to aspirin as it's a member of the salicylate family. And it can be found naturally in things like willow bark. And some of its special properties that make it so helpful to skin um, are because it's anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. But what is particular to beta hydroxy acids is that they are oil soluble. That means they can penetrate the oily pore that we find in the T-zone where sebaceous glands lie, getting inside to exfoliate our pores, helping remove little clogs, what we call comedones, whether they be open comedones or pesky blackheads that you so commonly see on the nose, or closed comedones. And whether it's closed or open comedones we're talking about, they help with acne, which is really key. And it's one of the best ingredients for helping unclog pores, tackling blemishes in the T-zone, um, and generally exfoliating and keeping skin clear. And that's in contrast to alpha hydroxy acids, which are water soluble, things like glycolic and lactic acid you may have heard of, which because they're not so easily able to access the pore because they're water soluble, aren't as effective when it comes to getting rid of T-zone congestion. And therefore salicylic acid is a much better acid to incorporate into an acne prone skin skincare routine. So the question is, what does it actually do for your skin? And I think that's probably best illustrated when we think about acne prone skin. So acne is caused by a number of things, overactivity of the oil glands, stickiness of the skin cells in the vicinity of that pore. And the gland is the structure that sits deep in the skin with a little tube that comes up to the surface. That's the pore, the opening onto the surface of the skin. And when skin cells become stuck to each other in that oily environment, they clog up the pore, resulting in comedones. And over time, that means the bacteria, C. acnes, that triggers the blemishes can proliferate and overgrow, creating inflammation, ultimately leading to blemishes, whether they're red bumps, papules, red bumps with whiteheads, pustules, nodules, or cysts. So if you think about salicylic acid, it basically has an impact on multiple points in that pathway. It can get rid of those sticky dead skin cells on clogging the pores because it cuts through that oily environment. And it tackles the inflammation as well, which means it's a really good ingredient to incorporate when you've got something new and throbbing sitting on your chin. Not only that, it also helps exfoliate the way dead skin cells that contain pigment, so the post-inflammatory marks that follow on from acne, so it can also help get rid of the aftermath too. So very versatile and really helpful when you are blemish prone. Now, before I forget, sebaceous filament, something people are very preoccupied with right now, but let me tell you, these are completely normal. You will not find sebaceous filaments in any dermatology textbook because it is normal for the oily pores around the nose and even the chin to get a little bit congested with dead skin cells. It's just our physiology. However, I do think salicylic acid improves their appearance as much as anything can. Now, when it comes to how often you should use salicylic acid, um, usually you're going to be using it as part of a regime with other ingredients. So if you're acne prone, for instance, or if you are very congested, you'll be using a retinoid at night. That means you'll have naturally a space for salicylic acid in the morning. I don't like to use retinoids and salicylic acid at the same time. 
Um, but if you were just looking to harness the benefits of salicylic acid, you can actually build it up to doing it twice a day. But I'd always suggest starting off less frequently every other day at the beginning, once a day. And then if skin tolerates it, build up to once or even twice a day. And you can certainly spot treat twice a day until the blemish starts to simmer down, starts to flatten out and starts to lose some of its red fieriness. The great thing about salicylic acid is it comes in lots of different formats. So there's something for almost everyone, whether it's in the form of a swipe on toner, if you will, like a liquid exfoliant, popular is Paula's Choice BHA, or it can come in a gel format like our flawless neutralizing gel. Um, or it can even come in a spray format where it's great then for using it on big areas like the chest and the back to treat body blemishes and clogged pores. Now, typically you're looking at anything from 0.5 to 2%. I generally like to air towards the 2% end of the spectrum to get maximum efficacy. And I do think you get more measurable results by using a leave-on product rather than something that you swipe on where you really don't know how much you're actually getting on the skin. So a really common question I get asked is, which should I use, benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid? And the reason they're often compared with each other is because they are both very effective as powerful anti-inflammatories in the event of a new blemish. Now, I use both of them in my toolkit. I think that benzoyl peroxide is potentially a little bit more powerful. However, downsides are that it doesn't really do anything else apart from have this anti-inflammatory comedone releasing effect, is what we call a comedolytic. Whereas salicylic acid has additional benefits like improving skin texture and therefore luminosity, and it is helpful in reducing the dark marks that blemishes leave behind. Another caveat with benzoyl peroxide is it does bleach things. So beware your favorite black t-shirt or colorful bed linen. But it is an either or. Some people are really sensitive to benzoyl peroxide and will find salicylic acid a much easier preparation to use. So it is to some extent a bit of trial and error. So you might wonder what the downsides to using salicylic acid are. And of course, like any active, it has the potential to cause sensitivity. So if you know your skin is sensitive and you're already using quite a few actives, introduce it with caution, with care, maybe strip back your routine a little bit until you get a sense of how your skin is going to behave with its introduction. Other than that, if you're allergic to aspirin, we suggest that you avoid it completely because of potential overlap in terms of how the molecules behave in the skin. And choose your formula carefully. A lot of preparations contain denatured alcohol as part of the formula to help solubilize the salicylic acid. And that can make it extra drying. So I think a lot of people do have this perception of some ingredients that they are particularly drying on the skin. And a lot of the time that is down to other ingredients present in the formula. So do look for something with a more hydrating base and an absence of alcohol, just to make sure that you're not missing out on the good benefits that can be found when it's formulated well. So back to the million dollar question, is salicylic acid worth the hype? And I have to say that my answer is a 100% yes. It is an excellent exfoliant, particularly good for those with oily combination skin. And we know that 60% of us have combination skin to some extent. And it's a really powerful ingredient to incorporate into your routine if you are blemish prone, but also want some of those nice texture improving benefits. I recommend a leave-on preparation with one to 2% salicylic acid and take care to find something that's alcohol free. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the notification bell because you're not going to want to miss next week's video on how to shrink your pores. Bye for now.